submitted for your approval. A seven foot tall winged humanoid with piercing red eyes that has made its way into the sight and the minds of the citizens of Point Pleasant. In the fall of 1966, the creature known as the Mothman took flight and spread its wings over West Virginia. John Keel was a Fordian. A Fordian is a person who was inspired and influenced by writer and researcher into anomalous phenomenon, Charles Fort. I'm not so sure that I'd be considered a Fortean. I've only read Charles Fort secondhand. If anything, I'm a Keelian or a Keelist, a disciple of John Keel. I've been greatly inspired by his work ever since I stumbled across a ton of Mothman books in the school library. Charles Fort once said, One measures a circle beginning anywhere. I've found that the Mothman legend is much the same. It has a way of engulfing everything and becoming all-encompassing. You quickly find that it's all connected. With concepts like Native American curses, World War II munitions plant, bunkers, polluted wildlife areas, bridge collapses, museums, statues, and festivals all being associated with the creature. You can also find your way to Mothman through the study of UFOs, unknown animals, West Virginia history, or most commonly, folklore and urban legend. I think it's safe to say that all roads in West Virginia lead to the Mothman. I think the best kind of fiction is the kind that makes you realize you don't know if it's real or not. Stories that make you question. Folklore and legend can sometimes even be better than fiction because it has its roots in reality. It's real people citing false things cloaked in emotion and fear. Folklore is simply the stories of the people, a grand epic being able to be conveyed by a simple person. It changes, evolves, and lives on for decades. No one person can own folklore. It's the ideas of the people all culminating into one entity. It builds like a snowball rolling down a mountain. Even though I can't believe in the Mothman because of lack of real evidence, I sometimes think of the Mothman as if it were real in order to study the legend. Asking questions like, if Mothman were real, would it be biologically possible for him to fly? Or, if Mothman were real, what would his flight pattern be? This form of research I call hypothetical investigating. It's when a skeptically minded person researches something knowing that it is most likely false, yet treating it as if it is hypothetically real in order to better understand it and collect data. This works best with legends and folklore, of course, because of the narrative structure of the claims. I find that it also makes it more interesting and entertaining. When studying folklore of the Mothman, I find myself thinking in the hypothetical a lot. You can notice that I use a lot of what-if questions. When you say the phrase, what if, you can literally say anything afterwards. For example, what if in other dimensions, human flight suits are the norm, and in 1966, someone traveled through a window in our dimension? Or... What if in 1966 they chose the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia as the best place to test a secret new aircraft, and it had red fog lights? It's like Mothman witness Connie Carpenter's husband said, What if? And if's a big question. As an investigator and Mothman historian, I do have my own headcanon of things I consider to make sense and work in the context of the folklore. There are certain explanations and things I favor in the legend. For example, I hypothetically view Mothman as a non-biological entity, possibly from another dimension. Other people view him as a number of things, from unknown animal to demon. At this point, I think the Mothman is growing from a legend into a mythology, as it culminates and grows wider in scope. As the year 1966 becomes farther and farther away, the legend is bound to evolve. Joe Nickel pointed out that at some point, the Mothman sprouted arms. Another thing is that some descriptions of the Mothman focus more on the name and try to make him more moth-like, while others stick to the actual source material and depict him as the witnesses describe. This more mothy depiction of Mothman can be traced back to Frank Frazetta, who did the amazing cover art for John Keel's book. The influence of this more literal interpretation of Mothman can be seen in Bob Roach's statue, and kind of in the Mothman Prophecies movie as well. The reddish blur that appears in front of the car is clearly in the shape of a moth, and not so much a moth man. The creature that the witnesses described was a winged humanoid with red eyes, not a moth. The moth man is only a name, given to him by the newspapers in reference to Batman. The moth man is not a moth, or in any way moth-like, as counterintuitive as that may be. If anything, he would look most like a half-human, half-bird, or owl. There are obviously things that are still being contested or debated in the Mothman legend, such as the inclusion of Indrid Cold. Some still disagree on if it is or isn't related. Indrid Cold was a normal-looking human being that communicated telepathically. He appeared to Woodrow Derenberger outside of Parkersburg, West Virginia, in a cigar-shaped ship. The reason it's thought to be connected is because it happened in 1966. John Keel investigated it and wrote about it in the Mothman Prophecies. 
Then the film adaption ran all the way with it, and seemed to take up most of the film covering Injured Cold. The movie implies that Mothman is Injured Cold, which is just a weird thing to do. Most researchers, including myself, don't consider this canon to the legend. Mothman isn't a shapeshifter, and I reject this whole idea of different people see it differently. Mothman is a very specific claim, a seven foot tall winged humanoid with red eyes. This doesn't match the description of Injured Cold in any way. These events could still be related in the same way that Mothman is related to the UFO flap. These strange events all happened at this time, and culminated in the bridge disaster. John Keel and the people of Point Pleasant surely thought that these ideas were connected, so sure, why not? When I think of what I consider canon, I usually go with what makes sense in context, what the witnesses report, and what John Keel found out. He's the main investigator, so he and the witnesses would know better than anyone. Another thing that people are not sure whether to connect or not is the Flatwoods Monster, which is another West Virginia folklore that happened in Braxton County in 1952. Some people think that they're the same entity, because they're both at least seven foot tall and have red glowing attributes. But I don't think that's enough to say that. The Flatwoods Monster has a red glowing face, not eyes. It doesn't have wings. It's also thought to be an alien and possibly a machine. I think it's definitely not the same creature, but once again, it could still be connected somehow. The legends do share similarities, such as the name Hire. One of the witnesses of the Flatwoods monster was a young boy named Tommy Hire. Then later in the Mothman legend, there was a newspaper reporter named Mary Hire, who worked with John Keel talking to witnesses and reporting on sightings. The name Hire is spelled differently between the two, but yet pronounced the same. There was also a man named Frank Hire, who was sent to the old West Virginia State Penitentiary in 1931. He was executed for murdering his wife. However, when the trapdoor beneath him was open and his full weight was put on the noose, he instantly decapitated. This marked the last time the public could attend these hangings. The Moundsville prison is considered a paranormal place. It closed down in 1995 after it was deemed cruel and unusual punishment. It executed 94 people and suffered inhumane medical practices, escapes, and riots. It also just so happens to have a painting of Mothman in it, painted by MTV when they visited for filming. Strange West Virginia folklore, painted atop strange West Virginia history. All roads lead to the Mothman. I think that for some reason, Humans have a need to create animals similar to themselves, yet better in some way. A larger-than-life, mythologized entity. One of my teachers in high school told me that when he was a teenager, he was obsessed with the Mothman and even believed that he was the Mothman, or a reincarnation of the Mothman. Mothman is like a superhero. He has the power to fly and predict the future. No wonder people want to be like him. No wonder people say, I am the Mothman. We've made Mothman in our image. Mothman is an alluring idea. One of the overall goals of science is predictive capability. We want to better understand the universe. We try to predict disasters so that we can hopefully prevent them in some way. We try to predict weather for our own convenience. There are always flaws in the system, and we've never achieved true predictive capability. What if Mothman turned out to be the answer? What if we really could prevent tragedies like the Silver Bridge Collapse by somehow heeding the warning of an omen of doom? It's an interesting thought, and maybe that's another one of the reasons people like Mothman. Some people are interested in learning about Mothman researching it, and also trying to spot it in real life. Like the monster hunters who search for Bigfoot, people actually want to witness the Mothman. They cautiously want to see it, just like the many cars that traveled into the TNT area in 1966 after the first report. It's clearly just a social event. Bored people, or people who are just really interested in the creature, want it to be real, and want to actually see it, and sure, why not, because it's never harmed anyone in the legend other than maybe Bandit the Dog. It's an omen of disaster to come, not a threat to humans in itself. I view Mothman as a neutral thing, but the argument can of course be made that he is a positive, doing a great service to humanity by warning them. That argument is much easier to make than the idea of him being a negative, because he's not the cause of any of the disasters that happened in his wake. When I first went into the TNT area, I honestly did hope in the back of my mind that maybe I'd see something. I genuinely did have that kind of confirmation bias while walking along the path at the time. Even the slightest sound or movement in the bushes made me think I'd hopefully stumble upon the source of my obsessions, the Mothman. I just hope that if I did, he was actually as peaceful as I thought, and not as terrifying or traumatic as described by witnesses. Of course, I didn't see him, because he probably doesn't exist. No one wants the Mothman to be real more than me, but unfortunately, reality doesn't always coincide with what we want, and so we must accept sad truths. People in modern-day Point Pleasant view him as a happy town mascot, unlike the people back in 1966 who seemed to be genuinely terrified and brought guns into the TNT area to possibly try and kill the creature. Most researchers today, including myself, think that if he is real, that investigators shouldn't try and harm the Mothman, but instead just get proof, because he's not hurting anyone. Mothman is viewed as a sympathetic and often misunderstood beast, like King Kong or Frankenstein and his monster. People seem to have sympathy and empathy for the Mothman. 
I see why people think this way. Mothman is a humanoid and leads to questions like, is he sentient? Does he have a consciousness? Is it morally wrong to kill the Mothman? Does he have feelings? Just how intelligent is the Mothman? He has never spoken, but eyewitness Mary Mallet says she heard him squeak like a big mouse. So does this mean he's purely animalistic or just unable to speak? Eyewitness Linda Scarberry said, It seems like it doesn't want to hurt you, it just wants to communicate with you. So does his presence, his warning, count as speech? Mothman is known to communicate through premonitions or nightmares like the one that plagued the people of West Virginia in 1966. He has the ability to put visions in people's mind. The reporter Mary Heyer had dreams of Christmas presents floating in the water, and then the bridge collapse happened that December. Even though Mothman is a bringer of bad news, people seek him out. I think that if searching for Bigfoot is like deer or bear hunting, then searching for the Mothman should be like bird watching. They're more peaceful and thoughtful about it. They appreciate the creature they're looking for. Bird watchers don't kill or hurt the birds, and the birds are very unlikely to harm them either. Just imagine Mothman investigators sitting on the hills in West Virginia with binoculars looking up for the Mothman. I actually think we should make the Mothman the official state bird of West Virginia. I don't see why that shouldn't be allowed. Mothman has quickly become one of my favorite characters, fictional or otherwise. Mothman may even be my favorite thing ever. And regardless of what you think of the Mothman, since 1966 he has filled the thoughts and imaginations of West Virginia. May the Mothman forever fly. The Mothman will never die.